Welcome to Module 2, Exploring Simulation Studio. Click Begin to get started. Double click on the Simulation Studio icon to get started. Welcome to the Simulation Studio. This is the graphical user interface where you can create your own models. Launching a new model in the studio. First, click on the File menu. Now select New from the drop down menu. In this module, we'll be looking at a solar hot water system. Select Solar Hot Water System from the project type. Now select Open. Welcome to your first transist model. This model simulates a solar domestic hot water system. Let's explore the different components of the model to see how it works. You can explore the model by hovering your mouse over the components and icons to learn more about each one. Running the first simulation. To run a simulation, first click on Calculate from the top menu bar. Then select Run Simulation. Because our simulation has an online plotter configured, we see the results plotted live onto the screen while they're simulated. The simulation is running for a full year because we set the stop time as 8760 hours in the control cards. In blue and red we have the inlet and outlet temperatures from the collector. And in pink and orange we have the solar radiation on the collector and the water flow rate through the circuit. The graph is showing a lot of information. You can remove the solar radiation from the plot by clicking on the g -Col label. It's much easier to see just the temperatures now. Remove the mass flow rates too. Click on the md -Col label to remove it. Now let's zoom into the plot to see the temperatures over just one week. We can do this by dragging a box around the area that we want to zoom into. Click and drag the cursor from the green X to the red X. Now we can see the temperatures over this week in much clearer detail. By holding down shift and dragging the cursor across the plot, we can see the values at the cursor's position shown on the labels for the inlet and outlet temperatures. If more than one plotter is defined in the model, extra plots can be viewed from the tabs at the bottom of the screen. Click on Graph 1 to see the other graph that has been plotted. This plot shows information about the water storage tank. Tank temperatures use the left hand axis. These axes have different scales as the values are of different magnitudes. Awesome! You now know how to run a simulation and use the online plotter. The next quiz will test your skills using the online plotter. Investigating a component. Double click on the collectors icon. This window shows the parameters of the collector. Now click on the input tab. These are the input variables to the collector, allowing information to flow from other components. The value given is the simulation's starting point. Otherwise the value will be the input variable's constant value if no other components are connected. Now click on the output tab. These are the variables that are output from the collector. Now close the collector's window. Nice! That's how to view the specifications of a component. Now we're going to do a short quiz to test your understanding. In this first quiz, you will need to launch the Simulation Studio and open the Solid Domestic Hot Water model to answer the following questions. How components work. 
Let's use a simple example to explain how components, parameters, inputs and outputs interact. Let's take an arbitrary transis component and then let's assign some parameters which are constant. Then we'll feed in some inputs which change with time. Inside each transis component we have Fortran code which calculates the outputs Y based on the parameters A and B and the input variables X. Component libraries. So where do all these components come from? Your available component libraries can be found on the right hand side of the screen. Let's find out where the solar thermal collectors are located. On the right hand side of the screen, click on the plus icon next to the solar thermal collectors folder to expand it. Now expand the quadratic efficiency collector folder. Now open the second order incidence angle modifiers folder. Click on type 1B. Now click inside the dashed box to place the collector on the screen. Nice one. Now added a solar thermal collector to the model. Reading the documentation about components. So where can you find out more detailed information about a component? Click on the question mark icon from the menu bar. Now click on help from the drop down menu. This will open the transist documentation menu. Topics include help on getting started with Transis, how to use the simulation studio, an overview of the standard component library, a component mathematical reference. Let's read the maths behind the thermal storage tank. Click on the red banner. Scroll down through the mathematical reference document until you reach thermal storage in the contents page. Here we are. Now press Ctrl F on your keyboard to find Type 4 in the document. Have a read through the mathematical reference for the stratified fluid storage tank. It's a good idea to check this document when you're adding any new components to see whether it is modeling what you have in mind. The next quiz is about searching the documentation. Investigating links between components. To find out what information is flowing between the collectors and the tank, double click on the link between the collectors and the tank. This window defines the connections between the two components. Note that the direction of information flow is important. Here we have the outlet temperature of the collector is the hot side inlet temperature of the tank. And the outlet flow rate from the collector is the hot side flow rate into the tank. Now close this window. Well done! You now know how to view the connections between any two components. The next quiz is about investigating links. Setting the simulation start and stop time. Simulation settings can be specified by clicking on the control cards icon on the left hand side of the screen. Here you can specify the start time, stop time, time step and solution method. For now leave the values of the defaults and close the control cards window. Viewing the results. To view the annual results, double click on the totals printer. Printers can be programmed to write simulation results to a text file. Note that the printing interval 
start and stop time are all set as stop, which is a constant defined at the end time of the simulation, 8,760 hours or one year. This means that the results are only printed once at the end of the simulation, i.e. they are the annual totals. To view the text file, first go to the externals tab. Now to view the file, click edit. These are the simulation statistics that have been defined by the printer. So what do the labels mean? We have the total time of the simulation in hours, the total solar radiation on the collector, the energy transferred to the water by the collector, the energy delivered to the hot water load, the energy supplied to the water by the auxiliary heating, annual efficiency of the collector, and the fraction of the hot water requirement delivered by solar energy. To see how this text file was written, click on the input tab. The values for each of the labels come from separate inputs. Now let's retrace these inputs. Double click on the link from simulation integration. The first four inputs are results of the simulation integration component. So double click on the simulation integration icon. The integrated component sums up an input variable over a set period of time. Remember the integration period stop means the variables are integrated over one year since the stop time of the simulation is set for 8,760 hours. Now double click on the link to the weather component. The first input to be integrated was the solar radiation from the collector, which comes from total tilted surface radiation from surface. So you can see setting up variables to be integrated and writing results is not too hard. And that's how you view the simulation results. The next quiz will test you on viewing results and will make use of the daily results printer this time. Click on Start Quiz when you're ready. Organizing the model by creating macros. When your model becomes more complex, it's helpful to organize groups of components that work together into macros. To create a macro, hold down the control key while you select all of the components that you wish to include in the macro. Let's start by clicking on Daily Integration. Now click on Simulation Integration. Now click on Efficiencies. And Daily Results. And finally, click on Totals. Now select the Create Macro icon. These five processing components which work together to integrate and print out the results have now been grouped together into a single macro. Let's explore the macro. All of the parameters, inputs and outputs for each component in the macro are now grouped together. Now let's go inside the macro and have a look. So first click on the macro. Then select the Go In icon on the left hand side of the screen. Welcome inside the macro. Creating macros is very useful if you want to create a function that may be used for multiple models. You can save this macro and insert it into a new project just like in any other component. To go back to the main model, click on the green Go Up icon. You can also explode the macro to bring all the components back onto the screen. Simply click on the green Explode Macro icon from the left hand side. Now you can see all of the contents from the macro have been returned to the main model screen just as before. Sweet, now you can organize your model with macros. Troubleshooting What do you do when things go wrong? Let's force an error in the simulation by deleting an important link. Now the daily load equation cannot function and will cause the simulation to fail. Just as we expected, the simulation failed to run, so click OK to go back.
The list file is the first place to go to identify any errors in the simulation. The list file contains a log of any simulation errors, notices or warnings. To view the list file, click on Calculate from the menu bar. Now select List File from the Open menu. Any notices, warnings or errors will be reported here after each simulation. Click on Row 2, the error, to find out more about this error. The error message says that the referenced variable DHW profile is not defined. This is because we deleted the link. We'd better reconnect it. Close the window. Now select the link tool. Connect the load profile to the daily load. Now connect average water draw to DHW profile. Now let's rerun the simulation to check the error is fixed. You can also use the F8 shortcut key. Perfect. The simulation runs fine, so the error must be fixed. It's a good idea to rerun the simulations regularly to ensure that no errors stack up over time. choice. That's the basics of troubleshooting, just checking the list file. We'll look at more advanced troubleshooting in later modules. Congratulations, that's the end of module 2. We've learned a lot about using Simulation Studio in this module. If you are comfortable with each objective, click continue. Otherwise, click back to revisit that material. We investigated components and libraries, links, and simulation settings. We learned how to read documentation about components. We ran the simulation and used the online plotter. Then we viewed the results using the printer. We organized the model into macros and layers. And we used the list file to troubleshoot an error in the simulation.